Hello everyone, Matsumus here again with you today, thanks for joining me. Let's be honest, tanks and armoured fighting vehicles are just awesome, and if you're watching this video and a subscriber to my channel, you should get used to that fact, because I absolutely love them. Uh, serving in the British Army, I always had a lot of involvement with armoured fighting vehicles, and know quite a bit about their mechanical history and, you know, mechanical principles. And today's video is discussing, really, something that relates quite well to me, because I've experienced it firsthand. Uh, and have had to deal with it on many, many occasions. A lot of people wonder what is a tank or an infantry fighting vehicle or any armoured fighting vehicle's main weakness. You could say it's armour, it's power plant, it's gun, to defend itself, you know, there's all sorts of different things you could debate about what's gonna make the tank at the end of the day be its biggest weakness. Some may even say the trees are one of the biggest weakness to tanks, and honestly, operating tanks in a tree environment is never a good time. But in Australia, these tankers decided to take it upon themselves to just destroy trees. Who needs trees when you have a tank running at around 60 tonnes, a huge 1500 horsepower power plant that can just annihilate trees? Yes, not even trees can stop the firepower of a tank. However, there are many things that can. We can talk about projectiles engaging them from distance at their armor. We can talk about power plants failing, i.e. their power pack or their engine. Um, and we can talk about trees trying to stop them. But at the end of the day, um, first-hand experience-wise, when I've dealt with tanks, there's one key weakness that everybody, for the most part, tends to forget or not really think about because it's not something that is uh, glorified. It's not something that's very, you know... Uh, macho in the tanking world to think about because it's not something that A, we like to talk about or do because it's a, you know, a procedure that for the most part is just horrible to do. Uh, and overall, it's just not really the elegant side of the tanking world. We'd much rather talk about armor and its capabilities and its firepower. But in reality, the true weakness of any armored fighting vehicle that is tracked is its tracks. Guys, I can't stress this enough. I have worked on pretty much every tracked armoured fighting vehicle in the British Army and know of the capabilities of each of those vehicles using the tracked system. Of course, tracked vehicles have many, many advantages, but also one of the biggest disadvantages of a tank is that obviously if the track is damaged or engaged or in somehow incapacitated, the vehicle is almost pretty much redundant on the battlefield. Track repair is something that is not fun to do. I'm not kidding you, it is a nightmare. I've experienced it in pouring rain, snow, sun, super heat, super cold, uh, deep mud, water, whatever you want to call it, it's just not a good time. A lot of people think that it's like World of Tanks or, you know, Armored Warfare where you press the repair kit button and the track miraculously just replaces itself and off you go back into the battlefield. If you know anything about tanks, tanks have to operate on what's called a neutral turning system, which basically means one track turns and the other track allows it to go the other way. So if one slows and one goes fast, it will take you left or right. If you don't have a track or it's incapacitated, guess what? You can only go forwards and only for so long, because at the end of the day, the vehicle will eventually lose traction on the one side and bog itself down in the road wheels. Once you lose a track, you are done your vehicle is pretty much incapacitated or immobile. And once you have a heavy armored fighting vehicle that is unable to move onto the battlefield, you are a sitting duck and absolutely useless to the rest of the battle group. Now track design is improving and changing through its history and I will be doing a video on the rubbered track system that you're seeing right now. A lot of people have been asking me, Matt Smith, what do you think of rubber tracks and armored fighting vehicles? And I've got to admit, I'm really interested in the technology that's coming out for it. Uh, I was a bit skeptical at first, but Honestly, I, I have a lot of uh, positivity going towards it now, so stay tuned for the future in discussing that. But really, guys, you can talk about armored penetration values, you can talk about how much firepower a tank has, how good it is um, in terms of power plant, its mobility, but mobility comes, obviously, at the expense of needing to use those tracks. If you lose one, you're done for. And if you don't realize it, that the most exposed area of the vehicle, other than its frontal hull, is those tracks. Once you put a round onto those tracks, they're done. It all needs, really takes a small high explosive round, a very small mine. Uh, it can even take, you know, um, grenade launchers. It really doesn't take much to take out a track. 
Now, one thing that we're taught in the British Army is what's called battle damage repair. In fact, most militaries around the world are taught battle damage repair. This basically means that it's an unorthodox way of repairing a vehicle. It doesn't matter how you do it, just get it fixed and get it back on the road. As you can see, these gentlemen right here are fixing up a vehicle that has been taken out by some sort of anti-tank mine or, you know, anti-tank missile that has knocked out most of the running gear and obviously the track. As you can see, these gentlemen are having to use cutting torches. Uh, the vehicle is completely down and out. It is not going anywhere at this point uh, even if you have the one track to take you forward you're still going to have an absolute nightmare of going anywhere and remember you can only go forwards you are not going left or right you're going nowhere else but backwards and forwards and again only to the extent of which those road wheels will start bottling me out these gentlemen are actually just tearing off every bit of junk that is still left on the vehicle that is getting in the way of having to do what's called battle damage repair to the track. They're going to make sure that the vehicle can be incapacitated to an extent to allow it to keep fighting, um, but allow it to not take too much time in replacing all these key components, which is actually a hell of a lot of fun because, um, you know, Normally, when you're working in a training environment, everything has to be methodical, it has to be done correctly, you've got to make sure all your equipment's on there nicely, talked up, blah, blah, blah. In an environment when you're in a combat situation, uh, at the end of the day, and that's kind of what I'm talking about right here in terms of weaknesses, because if we were going into an engagement, that is what we're discussing, um, battle damage repair is very, very important, but as you can see, this isn't a simple, quick process, even with battle damage repair. A track that is lost or extremely damaged takes a long time to repair, a lot of manpower, a lot of resources, and the tank is pretty much incapable of being able to engage other targets. For the fact of the matter is, the crew that are in the turret that can still operate the turret, yes, they can put rounds down range, but do you want to be the guys working on this vehicle as they may potentially still be engaging other tanks? No. And in a Remy sense, we tend to not push onto a casualty, as they're called, a vehicle is a casualty, unless it is totally secure around that area. Of course, we're always going to have that potential threat, but again, once you lose that track, you're done for. You are pretty much a sitting duck. You can use your main gun, yes, you can still use your main armament, but you're basically at this point just a bunker slash turret. Uh, there's a very famous quote that uh, comes from the movie The Beast. Uh, the tank that is incapacitated, as soon as you lose uh, the engine, you are a bunker. As soon as you lose the gun, you are a trench. And as soon as you lose the uh, you know, the vehicle itself, you're basically a pillbox and you're just going to sit in there uh, until you die. And that's basically what it is. Um, once you lose your track, you are then turning into a turret on the ground uh, or you know, a bunker position with a machine gun or whatever it is in comparison. Uh, as soon as you lose your gun, you are basically turned into a pillbox. You are just a steel box that cannot do anything but potentially you know, protect you, but also attract a lot of attention. Normally when a track is completely incapacitated and lost, most of the time the crew will either leave the vehicle and move on. Now in a modern warfare sense, we don't tend to see this very often uh, because normally high-end main battle tanks are not being engaged like we see back in the Second World War and such where, you know, vehicles would be abandoned and we'd leave them. Nowadays we have a lot more sensitive equipment inside vehicles like radios and things. We're not just going to leave a you know, vehicle in, in the battlefield on its own. We'll stay in the turret and try and engage. But as you can see, these guys have done a fantastic job of repairing this track to allow it to still fight another day. Probably not for very long in this configuration because it would... Uh pretty much annihilate itself after a while with those road wheels, but a very capable solution to allow it to keep fighting. But look how difficult that was and how much time it took. That's what I'm saying is you can talk all day you want about the different kind of armor packages, explosive reactive armor, uh, re resistance to anti-tank guided missiles, blah, 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 blah. All it takes, gents, is one recoilless round, um, one very uh, low-key um, you know, RPG to hit one of those tracks and you're done. It's it's over. You, you're not going to be able to do much more in the battlefield and you've just you know, got what was a six million dollar tank turned into nothing but a turret that can rotate and engage targets from distance. And if you're in a bad spot, which is normally where anti-tank mines are placed, you can't continue the fight, uh, at least with the turret, you, you, your tank's done. Uh, and that takes a lot of resources from the repair side and the logistical side to get you up and running again. So a lot of people have been asking me, you know, Matthias, what would you do to counter the effects of tracks being that, you know, uh, vulnerable to attack? Well, of course, there's many different options that you could look at. They do look at actually uh, trying to make protective skirts and armored skirts for these vehicles to kind of prevent um, RPGs or any kind of smaller uh, engagement of munitions taking them out. 
Problem is though that that adds weight to your vehicle and the more weight you add to it the more difficult the vehicle struggles to move around the battlefield, you know, you up armor a vehicle, you're reducing its overall mobility and capability so it's kind of, yes you're countering one weakness but adding to another being inherently that tanks are quite heavy. Another thing that is quite interesting when it comes to track uh, maintenance and track weakness is the inability for soldiers to look after their vehicles and tracks correctly. Of course, you'd think that you just put a track on and it's good to go and you'll just keep going on it until you need to repair it as per the operating standards of the tank. Unfortunately, that's not quite the case and I've seen many, many instances of drivers who cannot look after their vehicle or their tracks correctly. If you don't look after those tracks, they won't protect you in the battlefield and they will throw a track and that's you, again, completely incapacitated. When you throw a track from taking a corner too tight with a, what's called a loose track or saggy track, um, you're going to have a really bad day. Throwing a track is basically where the track comes off the, either the idler wheel or the rear sprocket and prevents you from actually doing anything other than locking up. And You can't even neutral turn at that point because um, the vehicle will then just lock the tracks and you will be dragging one track almost like a wheel with its brakes locked on. Uh, on a car and of course that's not a good time. That is something that I think a lot of crews don't think about um, when it comes to being on the battlefield. Yes it's very very good to have all this armor and all this firepower but if you don't look after that vehicle and look after its maintenance if that track fails you you ain't going nowhere and you are done for again so something just to think about in terms of maintenance. Of course the main battle tank or any kind of armored fighting vehicle is not completely at weakness due to its tracks. Tracks are pretty capable of taking on most hits. Um, when it comes to anti-personnel mines and such, for the most part, you may lose a few track pads, you may, you know, potentially lose a road wheel or two, but tanks are pretty resilient, especially modern day design tanks, they're able to take a bit of a hit, uh, but there's only so much steel links can take. A come to an anti-tank mine or come to an RPG hit, or even just a small, uh, close by explosion from a proximity munition, the track in most cases just isn't going to be able to take that kind of pressure. You've got to remember that the track is already under a hell of a lot of tension when it comes to operating on a standard basis. It's just being pulled left, right, up, down all the time under constant track tension, under a hell of a lot of torque with a lot of weight put on it. You add putting extreme tensions or extreme heat or explosions towards metallic areas like the tracks, they will fail. And as I mentioned, once you lose your track, it is a worst nightmare of any tank commander and driver, or just a crew in general, because you know you're pretty much either getting out to repair the damn thing, or you're going to be a sitting duck on the battlefield. It really is a worst nightmare, and you know, uh, one thing that really triggers me in video games and things nowadays is there's no real depiction of the mechanical and sort of maintenance side of, of sort of gameplay. Yes, you have the little repair button, which is completely ridiculous but I think honestly games should be more um, involved in tracks being blown off you know once you lose a track you can still play the game but I mean you're not going anywhere there's no repair button and if there is a repair requirement then another vehicle must come out to repair you one video game that does very well at this is Steel Armor Blaze of War. Fantastic game. Once you lose your track, it literally will come off, and you can actually throw your tracks in that game. So if you go too fast and take a corner too quickly, the track will actually come off, and I love it. A very, very good tank simulation game. I'd like to see Steel Beast Pro actually do a little bit more in terms of maintenance and repair, uh, considering it is actually a simulation software and not a game, so it's kind of practicality, it makes sense. But what I'm about to show you is a prime example of how just a simple, small little mistake can cause a tank to be completely incapable of doing anything other than just utilizing its main gun on the turret and any other munitions that are on it. This vehicle has come off the range road at probably quite some speed into a very rocky environment which has not only thrown and damaged the left track, but it has completely buckled the right track. You can see the angle of the front idle wheel, how much tension is just put over to the left hand side. That's not how tracks should look in any way, shape or form. But that now means that this vehicle is completely useless. Not only has it lost its left track, it has lost its right too. And this is purely under luck being able to be recovered by another vehicle and get it out of there and potentially repair. The repair time and, you know, uh, I guess logistics that are going to be needed to get this tank back operationally ready is long and very arduous and you're probably screaming down the computer screen at me right now saying but Maximus it still has its turret and its gun it can still defend itself of course it can of course it can defend itself and it probably would be protected by other assets to hold its position 
But remember, its capability as a tank, as a main battle tank, or even an infantry fighting vehicle, is now completely useless. Remember, main battle tanks are the spearhead of any armoured force, and mobility is key putting the pressure onto the enemy and taking the fight to them. Same thing with an infantry fighting vehicle, the same thing applies with tracks. If you lose your tracks, you lose that capability of being able to support your infantry. The infantry are not going to wait with you while your tracks are being replaced, they're going to push forward and continue with the battle. Um, so these are just things to think about, you know, the little things that you don't quite think about, you know, the glorious main battle tank with its main gun and its heavy armor packages and all these new, um, you know, defensive packages that they're putting onto tanks to prevent it from being attacked from ATGMs. All these things that we're kind of improving to make a tank so much more um, protected against threats that really the, the basic principle of the tank since the First World War really hasn't changed that much. Yes, technology has advanced to allow us to put different equipment on there, but the basic principle of how tracks work on the tank has not changed, and its vulnerability really has not changed. And that's why I'm curious as to look into rubber track systems in the future here in my next video, so stay tuned. But really, the basic principle is still there. They are the number one risk to a tank. You can cover it in armor top to toe, but if those tracks are exposed to any kind of small munition that can really just knock out two or three inches of steel, you're done for. Um, and you put between all that the stresses of the bolts and linkages that connect the tracks, it's just a really bad uh, recipe for disaster if you get engaged at the right angle from the right distance from the right target. Uh, it's going to knock your vehicle out and you're useless. So it's something to think about, guys. I know a lot of you are going to be highly upset by this video saying, no, of course not, Maximus. You know, there's so many different ways to prevent your tracks being engaged. Hold down position, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but that's just not what I'm talking about. My overall concern is that tanks and armored fighting vehicles, number one threat is immobility. The inability to actually continue moving forward in the fight and getting the vehicle out of a danger zone, out of a hot spot, and allow it to engage other targets. Once you lose that capability of moving left, right, or even backwards and forwards, like I said, you're just a pillbox slash bunker uh, with your gun that can still engage targets, but really that's all you have left. So that's it for today, folks. I hope you took a little bit of my opinion, because it is purely opinion on this matter today, and something that uh, hopefully you are tankers out there who are aspiring to be tankers, or uh, currently tankers right now in driving positions at least, please, from a mechanical standpoint, look after your vehicles. I know track maintenance isn't the most glorious thing in the world, and it is a pain in the ass to do, but please do so, because one day it could protect your life or save your life in terms of looking after those tracks in a battle scenario. I hope you enjoyed today's video, even if it did trigger you a little bit, uh, in terms of my own personal opinion on vehicle weaknesses, especially for tanks and armor fighting vehicles. But you've got to see my point, and I'd love to hear your opinion on it and your comments on it in my comments section below. Let me know what you think of the video's overall quality too. If you want to follow me, feel free to hit that subscribe button hit the little bell to be notified of any upcoming videos and if you want to support me on patreon it'd be much appreciated and thank you in advance and to all those who have already uh, donated towards my channel as i already mentioned before that money is going to be going towards my c7a2 rifle that i'm going to be celebrating my uh, application acceptance into the Canadian Army Reserve, so I can't wait to get that rifle out to the range and start doing some reviews and practicing with it. Uh, really looking forward to that. Um, please let me know if you want me to do any upcoming topics, vehicles, reviews, whatever it may be. I'd love to do it for you. Um, and if you want to come chat with me, come hang out in my Discord channel. The link is in the description box below, along with my Facebook and uh, Patreon account. And uh, come onto Discord, come have a chat. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. You can debate me if you want on the uh, Challenger 2 being the greatest tank of the world. I'm just kidding. Um, or uh, other topics that we've been discussing in the Discord lately. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. All the best and bye-bye.